Hello everyone, my name is Chuck. You're watching episode 133 of Let's Plant and this episode is going to be a bit different from the rest because I'm filming indoors in the comfort of my house, in the comfort of the living room and that's mainly because I am on babysitter duty today with the kids and I have to keep them in my line of sight at all times. <laughs> that's Zach in the background laughing and this is Nikki on my lap just playing with her toys. She just woke up so... Her eyes might still be a bit squashed. So as you can tell from the episode title, this episode is all about the show rules and schedules for this year's competition which is in October, just a month away from now. So in this episode, we're going through all said rules and the schedules and the list of classes. So as mentioned earlier, we finally have the finalized list of the classes and the schedules for this year's competition. And we just received them earlier this week or last week. And here it is. It should appear somewhere to the right of your screen, on my left. Uh, you know how mirrored things work. <laughs> Zach, Zach, can you come here? Say, say hello to the camera, please. Say hello to the camera. Hello. Hello. Look, show. Sure. There is something. Here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Thank hello. you, Zach. So as you can see, there are 15 of the rules here. And I, I've already gone through them. And I noticed that there are some details that were not shared before, which I only learned today. So let's have a read of each item now. First one is a competitor must be a financial member of the society for at least 12 months and have owned the entry for a minimum of 12 months before the show. So this is a bummer because I've been inviting a lot of people to join the show, the competition, and they have registered less than a year ago, which means that based on this rule of being a financial member for 12 months, they are not qualified. So this is a shame. but. Fortunately for me, I've been a member for, well, I've been a member since October last year, which means by, which means that by the time the show comes, I would have been a member for 12 months already. The second rule is mainly about explaining the difference between a novice and open member. So a novice competitor is someone who has been in a society for less than five years, while over five years would be open, the open category. Rule number three, are, there are no entry fees, which is good because at least this, was, this would encourage people to bring in to join the show. This would encourage members to join the show. Members, a year old members and older to join the show. There's no barrier to entry other than just being a member for at least a year. And, and of course, owning the plan for at least a year. Number four is just simply that there must be an entry form to be filled per entry. So we don't really have to go through this. Number five, this describes the restrictions, the restricted plans. Where's Zachary? There. Yeah. Hi. Hi. So number five is simply stating that we should not bring restricted plants to the show since we have to comply with the Australian biodiversity laws. Specifically mentioned here are Lopophora or Opuntia, except Opuntia, Ficus Indica, and Teprocactus. So these are not to be brought into the competition. Oh no, I'm losing space. Oh no, it's just the kids. I'm sorry. Zach is watching his shows. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like the camera? Number six, each competitor can only enter a maximum of three entries per class. Now, this is another spanner in the works because I have been hoping to flood the show with Echeveria and being limited to three per category per class is severely limiting for me. Ah, okay. Moving on. Rule number seven is just mainly to ensure that we have the plants in the correct class because last year there were some plants that were <laughs> filed incorrectly. So, yeah. Number eight is a hard deadline. We should have the plants in by Friday evening, 7.30 p.m. And that would be on the... I'm just checking the calendar. October. 
October 25th since the show would be on the 26th and 27th, the weekend. Be careful though. Yeah. Rule number 9. 9 and 10 is mainly about the condition of the plant. Of course, they have to be pest and disease free because they are going to be placed together with other plants and we would not want any infestation to, to break out. Number 10, do not water the plants less than 4 days. Look at your teeth. <laughs> This makes sense because we wouldn't want to make the hole messy with you know with mud and stuff. And at the same time, I'm keeping sorry. your plants dry would mean that they would not be actively growing, especially since they would be kept in tight quarters. I'm no, sorry. they would be kept in dark quarters. They have no yeah. direct sunlight. It's it. just artificial lighting, which means that they would not have enough sunlight to grow, and they would be leggy if they were actively growing. So we wouldn't want them. We would want to. <laughs> we would want to slow down their growth for a bit. 11. The competition chairperson has the discretion to reject entries or display plants. Number 12. Members entering plants are requested to bring in a reasonable number of display plants to the show. Now, this changes things because, as mentioned earlier, we are only limited to three plants per class, but we could bring in extra as display plants, not entering them into the show, which works for me because. Really, my main reason, my main, my main motivation for the campaign is just to have a, just to represent Echeveras a lot more, and bringing a lot of Echeveras to the show, even if they are not part of the competition, is something that I would like to happen. You know, thirteen, the judges' decisions are final with no appeal. Fair enough. Fourteen, variegated crested or monstrous plants are to be entered in their own classes as listed. So we will be going through that in the class list after this. <laughs> Let's sway our head. One, two, three. Left, right. Left, right. Left, right. Left, right. <laughs> no, you don't want to join Nikki. <laughs> yeah, okay. Press it, press. And now that we've gone over the rules, let's have a look at the classes. So the classes are divided into two general categories. First category would be cactus, and the second category would be for succulents. Actually, there's three categories because the final category is an all commerce category, which includes both novice and open combined. And let's have a look at the cactus category. Now, in each category, there are two. There are two sets. There's a, a set for novice class and a set for open class. I, this makes sense because presumably the open members have a have a better idea of how the show works, how the competition works, and they would be better prepared okay. for these things. Well, for a lot of us novices, this would be our first time joining, and we would not know what to expect. So experience. The open members have a. Daddy. <laughs> The open members have the advantage of experience over us novices. Now let's have a look at the different classes under Cactus. The first one would be Astrophytum, it has its own class, followed by Copiapoa, then Echinopsis or Lobivia, including hybrids. Then we have the Trichocereus and other cereoids. <laughs> Zucker face is so big. Then we have Echinocereus and Ferrocactus. They have their own classes. Yeah. Then Echinocactus or Luttenbergia. They're clumped into the same class. Maybe historically there haven't been I'm any. Big, there haven't been enough entries for <laughs> this two genera. Sorry about that. I Zach is it. so excited. I think they're funny. Then I think they're funny. the next I think class would be for Gymnos, Gymnocalisium. I would imagine that there had been. I think last year there were more classes for gymnos, but I guess this has changed. Now the next class, this one is grinding my gears because we have three classes for mammillaries alone and that's and they're grouped according to their growth habit. The first one would be for single body or dichotomous with two heads. And the next two would be for multi-headed or clumping and depending on the size, we have a category for under 14 centimeters and a category for over 14 centimeters. So if you're a mammillary collector, you have three classes right off the bat to join. Then we have the Melocactus class, followed by the Irio size group including the Neoporteria, Neocalinia, 
Mm. You know, Chilenia, I'm not sure. Poridocactus, wow. Ismeria, wow. and Pyrocactus. So I guess they... Mm. Bless you. <laughs> I guess they've been clumped together as one group since they, mm -hmm. there might not be enough entries historically, you know? Then we have the Parodia or Notocactus group. So the next classes would be the Rebatia group, including Sasalco Rebatia, Weingartia, Aloistera, and Cynthia. Then that's followed by the Ariocarpus and Strombocactus group, including the Asticium, Pelecyphoria, Epithelanta, Obregonia, and Turbinicarpus. Then we have the generalized groups, which are grafted cactus, which could be any genus. Then we have Monstros and Crested, any cactus. And Variegated cactus, any genus again. So if you are a cactus collector, focusing on a specific genus, then you would have your specific class and your generalized class. So if you're a collector of astrophytums only, then you would be able to join the astrophytum class. And if you have any grafted astrophytums or monstrous and crested or variegated, then you could join those as well. But in reality, cactus collectors tend to collect a whole range of cacti, if not all across the range, then this means that they can potentially join all of the cactus classes here and they have more chances of winning. So yeah, they have more, they have more things to do, you know, especially mammillaria collectors. Damn, look at all of those classes. Now let's move on to the succulent group. This is mostly where I'll be joining since I mostly collect Rashula C family. The first couple classes are for agaves, which are based on the size. We have the under and over 14 centimeters. Then we have the same going on for aloes. We have under and over 14 centimeters. And we have asclepiads, the non-codex forming ones. Then we have a bunch of codiciforms or codex forming plants. We have the pachycol, such as the pachypodium, adenium, cyphostema, and cadrostis. Then we have the codex other than pachycol and euphorbia, specific there, specific exclusion, because they have their own classes. <laughs> and finally, codex under 100 millimeters, so under 10 centimeters. The next class would be Adromiscus. I don't see a lot of them last year. I didn't see a lot of them last year, so I guess it makes sense that there's only one here. We also have a Crashula. Again, I didn't see a lot last year, so we only have one class for Crashula. We have two classes for Echeveria, but I still don't think this is enough since I think there's a lot of people who collect Echeveria and they are grossly underrepresented in the shows. So two classes, we have under and 14 centimeters. Then we have Sedum and Semper Vivum group into a single class. I guess it's because of the volume again. I don't see a lot of Sedums and Semper Vivums in the show, even if a lot of people co collect these types of plants, myself included. So I might be joining this. We also have a class for Aeoniums, which I definitely want to join. I've got a bunch of Aeonium plants that I think look nice. We had to pause a bit there because Nikki wanted her milk. <laughs> now, after Aeoniums, if you've been reading ahead, you would have noticed this. This is a very good example of a genus that, has, that is very well represented. So we have Euphorbia and there's one, two, three, four, five, five different classes just for Euphorbia. We have the globos, which are the, the ball shape, the, the thick boys basically. These are Obisa, Valida, Meloformis, Susanne as examples. Then we have the Euphorbia prostrate or, you know, lying on the ground. I think an example would be the Decarii. Is it? You know, the dead, the dead plant thingy. Then we have the Euphorbia shrubby, sprawling, thin stemmed with the fire sticks or Euphorbia tirocali count here. I'm not sure. Then we have the Euphorbia shrubby arborescent. Okay, this might be the more leafy version. <laughs> and finally, we have the Euphorbia codex. So five different classes for five different forms. This is something that I hope we have the same for Echeveria because I can definitely think of different forms that should be here. I personally would keep the Echeveria under 14 centimeters then Remove the over 14 centimeters and replace it with a whole bunch of other classes such as maybe the caranculated plants, the freely plants, the, the bowl-shaped plants, you know, the smooth leaves under 14. So taking a page from the mammillaria, we could, do, we could go with clumping versions, multi-headed. And yeah, I think those are the five forms that I would like to see for Echeverias or at least the five classes that I would like to see added in the future competitions. 
So yeah, let's keep pushing for that. And after Euphorbias, we have three classes for Haworthias. We have two for soft leaves. Depending on the size, we have under and over 14 centimeters. Soft leaf Haworthias, which include Simbiformis, Turgida, Retusa, and Pygmyae. <laughs> and we have the hard leaf Haworthias, such as the Atenuata, Gloca, Limifolia, Pumila, and Astroloba species. And I'm not a Haworthia collector, but I think there was a reclassification to Haworthiopsis, right? Was it just the hard leaf ones? I'm not sure. And then we have a class for Gasteria. I didn't see a lot of them last year, so this makes sense that there's just one. Then there's a class for hybrids of Haworthia Gasteria. This might probably mean the intergeneric hybrids, which is pretty much just Gaster Haworthia. Then we have hybrids of Aloe, which are Alworthia and Gaster Aloe, intergeneric. Then we have a bunch of mesems, such as Lithops, Conophytum, Argyroderma, Pylos and Dinteranthus. These are usually, you know, class. Uh, you would describe them as stones, living stones, split rocks. Then we have mesems that are not mentioned in the previous class. I guess there are other different types. And the more generalized types, such as variegated agave and aloe, they, I guess, due to the demand or the supply, we have a dedicated variegated class for those two. Then we have variegated other than aloe and agave, all other succulents. We have monstrous and crested succulents. Australian succulents, yes, we do have some natives here, but I don't have any of them. And any succulent not previously mentioned. Now, right off the bat, I can think of Kalanchoe and Sinicio, maybe a lot more, which are escaping my mind. Pachyphytum, uh, Graptopetalum, Mm, what else? <laughs> Cotyledons and yeah, a whole lot of others. But I don't think I have any that are, yeah, I'll, I, I'll need to have a look in the garden, but I don't think that I have any that are presentable right now. Maybe some Pachyphytums. Yeah, there might be something there. So I might be joining this one after all. And finally, we have the all comers category, which means it is open to everyone. And under here, we have dish gardens under and over 20 centimeters. I would be definitely joining this one. I just need to find a suitable bowl or pot for this. Then we have the unusual or humorous container. I don't think I'll be joining this since, as you know, I mostly plant in the ground and I do not have a, I do not have a sizable collection of pots, much less quirky ones. So I don't think I'll be going out of my way to Look for one to purchase one just for the show. So I'll give this a hard pass. Hanging baskets, this is something that I might be interested in, but I don't think there's enough time. We have a bit over a month till October till the show. So I don't think I would be able to get any of my hanging plants settled by then. You know, it's quite a short while. So I'll be giving this a pass as well. But I think I think I could prepare I could start preparing my hanging baskets for next year if I do want to join. At least that would be more than enough time to get them settled and to get them flowing nicely, you know? Because if I prepare one now, they would just look like uh, thin, thin strands, weak. <laughs> it would be a weak arrangement. I don't think that would be good for the show. And finally, photographs in a standard 25 by 20 centimeter format, maximum of three entries per exhibitor, and this must be a photo of your plants. This is something that I could definitely do as well, because as you know, I love taking photos. I have a huge archive of photos of my plants through the years, so it's just a matter of finding, the, finding photos that I really like from my archive. So let's do a recap. I'm definitely not joining any of the cactus categories here, cactus classes, since I don't really collect cacti, but succulents, there, there are quite a few here. Definitely the two Echeveria classes, definitely Sidum, definitely Aeonium. I might join this one, any other succulent not previously mentioned. I might have some others here that would work. We have the two dish gardens, which I would be joining as well, and photographs. So that means there are seven physical classes and one photograph class. With seven physical classes, that means that seven classes times three plants, 
I would be looking at 21 different types of plants for the show and 21 different pots. <laughs> I'm not sure if I have enough pots, but that's something I would be looking around. And you know what, reviewing the rules now is a, sort of a blessing in this, guys. Because I now know that I have to prepare only three per class. And I was originally thinking of bringing a whole lot, a whole collection of them. I might be preparing five per class and the rest would be display plants. But I don't know. In the next episode, I'm going to go around the garden, round up all of my plants, plants that are, that are potentially joining the show. And I would need your help, your comments and suggestions, your opinion on which of the plants, which of those I collected would be fit, would be best for the top three, which would be, which I would be formally registering to the show as my entries. Because you fellow collectors would know that we have some sentimental value attached to the plants and we would, we would consider all of them our favorites. So it would be really hard to choose and I would need a third party opinion, an outside opinion, you know, a less biased opinion to help me choose, to help me see through my biases, to see through my sentimentality and pick the plants, pick the right plants for the show. So we'll do that in the next episode. And speaking of the next episode, I might be putting it out a bit late, if not before the weekend next week, because next weekend is actually my birthday. And we're thinking of going out as a family on a little vacation. N nothing, nothing too far, just local within Melbourne. But I'm thinking of also going offline. That is no recording, no filming, no YouTubing <laughs> for a while. You know, it would be a nice time for me to refresh, relax, and recharge, and hopefully come back quite strong after the break. So yeah, I think I think it's a good chance to spend time with the family, and yeah, recharge. So I think episode 134, the episode after this, would be coming up before next weekend. Episode 135 would be skipping another week, if not. The next, next, next weekend, we'll see. Because I'll, I'll be quite busy over the next few weeks. But it's spring and the days are getting longer, which means that I might still be able to sneak in some filming at the end of the day, you know? Longer sunsets. <laughs> so I'll see you in the next episode. I hope you appreciated knowing, learning about all of the rules as I did. And if you're not going to join this year, I hope to see you next year. So make sure to join the club now, join the society now. That way you could secure your entries for next year. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Nikki, say bye. Nikki, say bye. Bye. Zach, come here, say bye. Say bye. One, two, three. Bye. bye. <laughs> Great job. <laughs>